Wherever you're watching us, uh, it is politics today. It is 6.30 p.m. in London and, of course, uh, 7.30 p.m. in Lagos, Nigeria, 1.30 p.m. in Washington, D.C., and that's where we have Chika Modi. Back to you, Chika. Uh, pr probably Nigerians would love to see uh, something that they can glean from this election, but for so many, they thought that this is almost uh, having a semblance of the elections back home, talking about the campaign, the electioneering before the big day. Uh, do you agree? Um, yes and no. I mean, there were, there were elements of this campaign that were very divisive and characteristic for American um, elections. And in some ways, there's a lot of politics. So you, you could see demographic break out, um, breakdowns approximating actual voting um, patterns. Um, no, in the sense that um, there's far more transparency, and um, contrary to what Donald Trump will have you believe, the system is definitely not rigged. So there is a lot of transparency, and it will be incredibly unusual to have any um, sort of voter fraud or any sort of rigging going on. For many, they've uh, come to realize the divisive tendency of this election and how divided the United States uh, is at the moment because uh, these two leading candidates have shown that truly uh, there is some kind of a division amongst races and ethnic, ethnic nationalities in the United States. How can, that, how can the winner of this election help to bridge that gap and pull America back to what it has always been, a united nation? It's going to be an insurmountable challenge. I mean, it, it has to be done, but I don't see that happening in the near future. Um, America is not unique in this sense. If you look across the pond and you go to Europe, you've seen the rise of far-right parties. You saw what happened with Brexit. Um, you see the challenge of Marine Le Pen in France, and it, it, you can see um, clusters in um, the Netherlands and as well as Germany. So I think at the roots of all of those is economic anxiety. And that has led to identity politics. Uh, as the economy gets, though so far the, the growth has not quite been inclusive in terms of creating jobs, you, hopefully you're going to see a reduction in identity politics. But in terms of the dynamics, um, a Trump presidency will be quite different from a Clinton presidency in the sense that most, most people agree that Republicans are going to keep control of the House and maybe they might get the Senate or lose the Senate. If they keep control of the House, Congress, which they're very almost certain to do, um, we are more likely to see the same sort of obstructionism that they've had in the last few years with President Obama. And if that is the case, then it's very for um, President Hillary to push through a governance agenda. Um, ironically, if there's a Trump presidency, he's going to find it easier, especially if they take the Senate as well, to push through his agenda. Um, with a President Hil um, Hillary Clinton, there's an impetus to unite people after the election. Um, I doubt very much if that would happen with the Trump presidency. Not so much because of his personality, but because of victory for him would basically um, reinforce the idea that you can win elections without the minorities, and there will be no need to therefore unite. We'll come back to the economics of this election and how much uh, uh, this election is worth. But uh, quite frankly, when I look at the elections, uh, uh, when I look at President Barack Obama, I remember President Jonathan for one thing. Loads and loads of people thought when he came on board he was going to have a whole lot to do with the Niger Delta in terms of infrastructure development. Uh, just so as many Africans thought that President Obama was going to look towards Africa, but they didn't see quite much. Are you expecting... Uh, so much for the continent, the African continent, from whoever emerges? Um, to be quite honest, I, I don't see a radical departure from existing policy. And you raise a very good point there, because I think intuition tells people that, well, Obama and Africa, and you're going to see better fortunes in terms of U.S.-African relations. Um, it's not been quite the case. As a matter of fact, I hate to admit it, but President Bush did have he was better for Africa if you look at the um, totality of the impact of their policies. Now, um, a Trump or Clinton presidency, they've been very short on policy specifics. And I think it's one of the tragedies of this election. There's not been much of a debate on policy. Um, it's really been about how to, you know, assail each other's personalities and the rest of it. And so there's not been that scrutiny. And even if you go through the website and the documents they provided, there's been very little detail. 
Um, in, in terms of Africa, the U.S. continues to be important to Nigeria and to Sub-Saharan Africa um, in many ways. Um, maybe not, not as important as it used to be um, because the trade, the trade has dropped significantly. The U.S. is nowhere near uh, top two trading partner, top four for that matter. But it continues to be the largest single investor, foreign investor in Nigeria and is the putative um, defender of democracy, if you like. So in a sense, it's still very important. I suspect that a Trump presidency would start on almost a clean slate, whereas the Clinton presidency will continue the existing um, policies on Agoa and sort of um, extensions that have been done in the recent past. So it, there might be more of an opportunity with the Trump presidency than with a President Clinton. Now let's look at the money involved in this election. Uh, it comes to many as the most expensive election in living history. It is, um, without a shadow of a doubt. And I think it's been exacerbated by the pronouncement of the Supreme Court. And some of your viewers might be familiar, but there was a judgment by the Supreme Court um, on the, the case of Citizens United, which essentially um, lifted any lead on, on financing campaigns. And so you can raise as much money as you want and go anywhere in the country and push it into um, um, elections. And what that has done is beyond distorting the big relationship between the electorate and the electors. You know, so now if you have more money, it magnifies the influence you have on, on the elected officials. Beyond doing that, it's made the, the um, elections more of an arms race. Now, there are some structural issues with elections in the U.S. The, the media markets are very expensive, and in some of the swing states, it's pretty much expensive. So if you're buying hard time, say in Lagos, or you're buying in London, it's far more cheaper than if you're buying hard time in, in, say, in some of the more popular cities that are in contention. So but it is too expensive, and I suspect that if um, a Clinton presidency prevails, reminds the revisit of the Citizens United decision. Chikamori, awesome moment speaking with you. Many thanks. Thank you. Now as we move on, we'll look at uh, what uh, you would want to call amazing sound bites from these two leading candidates. Do you want America to be ruled by the corrupt political class? Or do you want America to be ruled again by the people? I am asking for the votes of all Americans.